Yes. Yes. Now, if you're really in faith, after you released your seed or about seed that you've sown in times past, how could you tell? How could you tell if you were really in faith? You'd get excited. In spite of what you see and feel, what's been going on, how many bills is piled up on your table back home, you would get excited that something's going to happen. Something good is happening for you tonight. It is so easy for God to take care of us if we just believe Him. All things are possible to Him or her that believes. Thank you guys for the good singing and playing. Y'all can be seated. Didn't they all do such a good job, everybody, on Sunday? Man, I'm telling you, top notch singing and playing. I heard parts, harmonies. I heard fancy chords. Whew. Man, we're coming on up. <laughs> Go with me to two places, please, in the Scripture. 1 Corinthians 15, and then we'll look right over a page at 2 Corinthians 2. 1 Corinthians 15th chapter, 2 Corinthians 2. For some weeks now, we've been on this subject of thanksgiving victory. Thanksgiving victory. And we want to uh, continue on that tonight, go further into it. And I would uh, remind you that you are here not just as spectators, hmm? but you and I are partners together in believing God for revelation, for light, truth to come out, not only for ourselves, but for people around the world, right? Right? That'll hook be, be, that are hooked with us right now and that will uh, download these services and uh, the DVDs or CDs or downloads even could be next year, could be 10 years from now. The Lord tarries is coming. Truth doesn't expire. <laughs> Truth do, doesn't go bad. It lasts forever and ever. And uh, it, truth will be still just as true and powerful a thousand years from now. And uh, I know a lot of you are Friday night regulars. You've been here f from the start, and I sure do appreciate your, your faithfulness. And not just your attending, but your faith. Yes. We've talked about this, you know, at different times, and I just want to stir you up on it, that you, you understand you're not supposed to just come in here and then just sit and relax right. and, and just wait on me to wow you with some special word. You are a partner together yes. with me, and you believe in not just for yourself, but like we said, for all these people that will be impacted and affected even in years to come. So are you with me tonight, friends? Are you with me? You're awake. You're, you're focused. And you're not, your eye's not on me. You know I'm not the teacher. The Holy Spirit is the revealer of truth. But you and I believe in God together for great things to come out light and truth, and once it's out to where we can hear it and see it and put it down on recorded media, then others can be enlightened, right? Even for years to come, thanks be unto God. God always responds to our faith. Whatever we believe Him for, He's able to respond and give that to us and do that for us. So we must not be passive in these regards, but we must be active in our faith. Somebody say, I'm believing God. I'm believing God tonight for utterance, revelation, light, answers. We're believing God. Okay, let's do it then. Let's do it. Yes, we do. Father, in Jesus' name, we submit ourselves before you and we agree together as touching this thing and asking for utterance and anointing and light and truth to come out, just exactly what pleases you, what's good in your eyes. Say all that you would say. Do all that you would do. We ask for it in Jesus' name. Amen. 
1 Corinthians 15, are you there? 1 Corinthians 15 and 57 says, 1557, 1 Corinthians, But thanks be to God, which gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Read it out loud with me. But thanks be to God, which gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Thanks be to God. Who does what? Gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Is victory connected to thanksgiving? It is. Second Corinthians. Second Corinthians, the second chapter. Verse 14. Second Corinthians, second chapter. 14th verse says, Now thanks be unto God, which always causes us to triumph in Christ. And it goes on, but let's say that first part again. Now thanks be unto God, which always causes us to triumph in Christ. Who does it? God. How does he do it? In Christ. What does he do? Always. Always causes us to triumph. How many know if you're always triumphing, you're not losing? You're not being defeated. You're not being overcome. You're not going down. He gives us the victory. And he always causes us to triumph. We are winners. We're overcomers. We're more than conquerors. We're victorious ones. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Say, I'm a winner. I'm a winner. Well, if the, ever, if the devil ever tries to tell you that you're a loser, you ought to laugh right out loud because you just heard from the biggest loser that there ever was. Loser? He's the loser, capital T, capital L. Have you read the back of the book? The devil's the biggest loser there ever was or ever will be. He is the eternally defeated one. Yes. He don't like it when you talk like this, which is why I get loud when I say it. Yes. <laughs> the loser. He's the loser. You're the winner. Yeah. Somebody say, I'm, I'm a winner. I'm a, I'm a winner. How often do you win? Always. Religion says, well, you win a few and you lose a few. That's the way the old ball bounces. You, and you, you just never know. None of that's a scripture. None of that's what the Lord told us. If you look to him, if you'll stand on his word, if you'll do what he tells you to do, you will win every time. Every time. There's no such thing as a God-ordained failure. God-ordained defeat. No, no. We've gotten into defeat. We've gotten into failure when we got away from him. We did something different than what he said to we got off his word. We got off of faith. But we're leaving that behind. I said we're leaving that behind. You know, in, in the first part of my life learning to walk with the Lord, there was more than one thing that I tried to talk him into doing. <laughs> now, what are you laughing so big? You've done the same thing. I tried, you know, I, I sensed, of course, you'd be in immature and, not knowing a lot of things, I, I should have known it, he wasn't talking to me about it, and I should have known in my heart it was not the way to go, but I tried to talk him into, you know, do, letting me do it, letting me do it, and, and, and he let me do it. 
to my hurt. And then something else come up, and I just pushed, 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 and, and he let me do it. You know, the Lord will let you do things. That's not his will. You know, Israel at one point wanted a king. And he told them it wasn't his will, it wasn't his plan for them to have a king. But they pushed so hard, now we want a king. Finally, he said, okay, have your king. He even pointed one out for him. But it was never his perfect will. He will let you do things. And after two or three times of that, and taking years sometimes to overcome the aftermath of it, finally one time I got on the floor and put my nose in the carpet and said, oh God, I don't want you to let me do stuff anymore. <laughs> I want to find out what you want me to do. I want to do that. Help me, Lord. <laughs> Go with me over to Matthew. We've looked at this repeatedly, but let's look at it again. Matthew 16. Is there a connection between thanksgiving and victory? You can see it. And a big thing to notice is that he's not just talking about thanking God about things that have happened in the past. Thanks be unto God who what? Well, the first one, giveth us. That, that's what tense. And future. Gives, gives, we'd say today. Gives us the victory. Not gave us the victory. Gives. Gives and will give. And, and in 2 Corinthians, what's the tense? Always causes us to try it. That's present and future, isn't it? Is he thanking God for victories that haven't happened yet? He said, thanks be unto God who always causes us to try. Is he thanking God for victories he hasn't seen yet? That's faith. And that's the part we need to develop in. A lot of Christians have learned how to say, thank you, Lord, when something happens. But it's only the faith men and women who have learned how to stand and thank God all day and you don't see it yet. Thank God day after day and it still feels like it's not true. Thank God week after week and you still don't have a clue, can't see how it could happen. Faith shouts while the walls are still up, doesn't it? Faith gives thanks before you see the money. Before your body feels better. Hmm? Before you feel free from that habit. You thank God for setting you free. Before you see how you can ever work that out between you and that individual. Faith thanks God for working it out. Some way. You don't know how. But you're thanking God anyhow. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. You feel so inadequate. You, see, you feel so... Uh, unskilled or uh, uneducated or unable in some way, but faith will say, I, Lord, I thank you. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I thank you for showing me how to do that. I thank you. This ought to be the way all of us live every day, night and day. This is the faith walk. Faith thanks God for things you haven't experienced yet. You, haven't, you don't have in your hands yet. You don't see how but if you will do that in faith, it opens the door for God to come in and grace you. I said grace you. Give grace to you to bring to pass what you're thanking him for. Thank God for paying. Thank you, Lord, for paying those bills. Thank you, Lord, for bringing that money in. You don't have to have a foggy clue where it's coming from. Just thank him, thank him, thank him, thank him, thank him, Lord, we're thanking you. You know, every project we've done in this church and ministry, that's how we did it. Yeah. We didn't know where, you don't know, you know, you got no guarantees. Nobody is, uh, you know, there's no contracts that anybody signed in the church or outside of the church about what they're going to give by a certain time or, or a certain way. How do you know? You know, this last project with the land, we stepped out in faith and went ahead and set a closing date. And all the money was in. Was 
listen, if the money came in right on time, you must say, well, I, I think I'll try that. You're about to get in trouble. <laughs> it don't work by trying. You better hear from the Lord, right? You got to hear from Him. You don't just do something off the top of your head. You don't just do it because you need it or because you want it. You need to hear from Him. But there was nothing in the natural that would tell us that that amount of money would come in by that time. What are you counting on? Every time I thought of it, you know what I said? Thank you, Lord. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for taking care. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Man, it's so easy when you learn how to do it. It's so easy. Who can say thank you? Let me see. Who can try it out? Thank you. Lord. Can you say it? Try it again. Thank you, Lord. Now you need to add something to it. What are you thanking him for? You're thanking him for things haven't happened yet. You don't see how they could happen. And it's, it's so easy to get in faith and to stay in faith as long as it takes. Let's say you've got a body part that's bugging you and bothering you. You can talk about how your back hurts you. You can talk about that pain in your side. You can talk about that migraine. And the more you talk about it, the worse it'll get. Or you could actually do something about it, something that would help. Anybody know what would help? He took your infirmities. He bore your sicknesses. He carried your pains. Oh, that's past tense, past tense. So what do you do? It's all right to ask him to take care of that, if, you know, but you don't do that a thousand times. Once you've asked him, he heard you, he knew. What do you do? Believe you receive. And when you believe you receive, what do you do now? What, what's left? But thanksgiving and praise. And so you go around and let, let, instead of every symptom trying to rob you of your faith, let every symptom be a reminder that it's time to thank God some more. <laughs> Oh, did you get it? Did you get it? Let every symptom be a reminder that will frustrate your enemy. I said that will frustrate him because that's not what is supposed to happen. Symptom recurrence, symptom getting worse, you're supposed to start crying and get all upset and go, why isn't this working? Why not? I'm a Christian. I go to the faith church. It's not supposed to be happening to me. Brother so-and-so pray. That's when the devil's laughing at you. He's going, ah, it's working. Okay. Give him some more symptoms. <laughs> Just knock them right out. But if every time a symptom hits you, you go, oh, thank you, Lord, for healing me. Thank you. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, thank you, Lord, for healing. Thank you, Lord. I just want to thank you that Jesus took my infirmities and bore my sin. Thank you, Lord. And then you just go off and just, I mean, you just break out into song. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I want to thank you for healing me. You know, you healed me last year and you healed me the year before. And you healed mama and daddy. And you healed all my friends. Thank you. Thank you. I mean, I mean, break out. Break out. You must have said, I can't sing. Yeah, you can sing. Everybody can sing. Not everybody should record, but every, everybody can sing. Right? It'll help you. And can you see how it frustrates your enemy? He means for it to discourage you. And if all it's doing is encouraging you to thank God more, it's backfiring on him. Can you see that? That means the more he pokes you, the more you praise God. And he goes, wait, I, maybe I should quit poking them. No, I want to poke them. But they just praise God more. So frustrate your enemy <laughs> glory you find Matthew 16 Matthew 16 Jesus is telling his disciples about all the bad things that's about to happen to him he's going to be scourged he's going to be mocked he's going to be Treated unjustly and unfairly. He's going to be killed. 
Of course, they don't want to hear that. He's the greatest thing ever came into their lives. They got great plans for him. They could see him taking over, <laughs> fixing everything. And of course, that's right. They just were off by a few thousand years. <laughs> it's a real lesson to learn here. I mean, sometimes you, you get it. You got the thing right. You got the time way off. And it makes a big difference, doesn't it? And so they're thinking he's, you know, Peter got bold with him. Let's skip on down there to Matthew 16 and verse uh, 22. Peter took him and began to rebuke him and said, Be it far from you, Lord, this shall not be to you. And the Greek in, in the margin of my Bible says, the Greek says, Pity thyself. And you see one of the strongest responses from Jesus in, in the whole passage of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. He turned around and he said to Peter, Get behind me, Satan. You're an offense to me. Why did he respond so strongly? What was said that was so offensive? Now, when we hear offense, we think so many times about things that make hurt your feelings or make you mad. But if you look up the word, offense has to do with trap and snare, like trying to trap a bird or trap a little animal. And even the, the stick that closes the door, the trip, we use that word, trip. Are there things that the enemy sets up to trap us? Are there things that are the trip? If you, if you knock that out, boom, the door's going to shut, you're going to get in trouble, you're going to get ensnared, you're going to get entrapped. In, in, in well, that's what, if you, if you read it, in other translations, they bring it out. The NET says, get behind me, Satan, you're a stumbling block to me. The English version says, get behind, get away from me, you're an obstacle in my way. And uh, the basic English says, get out of my way, Satan, you're a danger to me. God's Word translation says, get out of my way, Satan, you're tempting me to sin. You're a danger to me. You're a snare for me. You're tempting me with what? what? What was dangerous to Jesus? Pity yourself. Now, if you hadn't been here with us in previous sessions, we've already covered a lot of ground. But we're finding out that, you know, what is the opposite of being thankful? Well, not being thankful, being unthankful. And we, uh, the, I started to say, we, the Lord asked me this question when we first started this series. Is there a place in between thankful and unthankful? I didn't think that up. He, I don't mean I heard a voice, but inside me, he brought it up. Is there a place where you're not thankful, but you're not unthankful either? You're just neither one. There is no such place. If you're not thankful, what are you? You're failing to be thankful which makes you unthankful. Is being unthankful a problem? It is a huge problem. And the further we go, the more I'm seeing it. I'm seeing what an issue it is and how big a part it plays in our, every one of our daily lives. How many understand every morning when you open your eyes and you slide your feet out on the floor, you're either what? Thankful or you're not, which means you are if you're griping about something, you're certainly not thankful. Huh? Think about how some Christians start their day. I'm not talking about unbelievers. I'm talking about Christian, church-going folk. They slap the clock sideways. <laughs> and they go, grumble, grumble, grumble. What time is it? Oh, grumble, grumble. <laughs> and they stumble across the floor. Hit their toe on a toy that one of the kids left. A, oh, grumble, grumble. A lot of them do good if they don't cuss. <laughs> oh, grumble, grumble. If I've told them one time, I've told them a thousand times not to leave the toys out in a grumble, grumble, grumble. And they come over to the bathroom and they look in the mirror. Oh, grumble, grumble. Grumble. <laughs> 
Men or ladies. Grumble, grumble. What am I going to do with my hair today? Would you look at that mess? Oh, grumble, grumble. Grumble. And you look out the window and it's raining. Oh, grumble, grumble. <laughs> grumble, grumble. So you fumble around and you complain about your face, you complain about your hair, you complain about this ache, you complain about this pain, complain about getting old. <laughs> and you stumble over and look in your little closet. Oh, grumble, grumble. <laughs> I hadn't got a thing to wear. Well, what's all that stuff hanging in there? Oh, grumble, grumble. And this is too tight. None of it fits. Grumble, grumble. <laughs> Those dry cleaners shrunk up my pants. I told them not to put all that stuff in that water and shrink it up like that. Oh, grumble, grumble. And where's my shoes and where's my socks? Grumble, grumble. And stumble into the kitchen. What kind of bacon is this? I told you I don't like such and such bacon. I don't like, I like my bacon like this. Grumble, grumble. Grumble. <laughs> Get out. You, 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 you. <laughs> oh, grumble, grumble. This piece of junk car. Grumble, grumble, grumble. Grumble, grumble. And you're supposed to be leaving for a new one. But grumble, grumble, grumble. I mean, this don't work and that don't work and the air conditioner don't work and it's got a hole in the seat and grumble, grumble, grumble. Listen to me. Let's stop right here. If you're grumbling about the clothes you got, that is undermining your faith for better clothes. If you're grumbling about the car you got, you're undermining your own faith for better one is working against the other. One is calling on the provider and the other is opening the door to the destroyer. This is not my idea. Go to 1 Corinthians 10, please. You may think I've digressed, but I haven't. All of these are reasons for you to pity yourself and for you to feel sorry for yourself because you got so much wrong in your life. Other people have nice hair. <laughs> Other people don't have to work on their self that long. <laughs> How would you know? How would you know? Other people got nice clothes to wear. Other people don't have trouble with their cars. How would you know? You don't know. You're comparing reality to fantasy. Let me say that again real slow. You're comparing reality to fantasy, some ideal fantasy that you've imagined how their life is and you've got no clue how their life is. I assure you, they have issues. They have things they're dealing with. I don't care who they are. We all got the flesh. We all deal with the same devil. We all deal with the same curse in the earth and the same crazy people. Right? If they're not the exact same ones, they're just like them. There's plenty to go around. <laughs> Problems of all kinds. No, friend, don't, don't let yourself get to looking at somebody else and imagine this wonderful, amazing life that they have and you don't have a clue what it's like at their house or what their relationship don't Don't do that. Don't be so easily duped. You may be way better off than they are in several areas and not even realize it, not even see it and know it. But here's something for sure. If you don't start thanking God for all that you got going right in your life, you're in danger of losing it. You're on your way to losing it. It's dangerous. Jesus wouldn't wheel around like that and speak like that if this wasn't a major issue. And if it was an issue to him, it's certainly an issue with every one of us. 
1 Corinthians 10, did you find it? He said, verse 10, 1 Corinthians 10, 10, Neither murmur ye as some of them murmured and were what? Destroyed of the destroyer. Now all these things happen to them for examples are examples. And they're written for our admonition. They're examples for us. He goes on to say, verse uh, 13, There has no temptation taken you, but such as is common to man. I told you they were having issues too. But God is faithful. Somebody say, God is faithful. faithful. Say it again. "God God is faithful. He'll not suffer you to be tempted above that you're able, but will with the temptation make a way to escape. That's a way out. How many know no matter what's going on, there's a way out. There's a way out. I'm talking about a way out of the problem, a way into victory, and we have found it. It is faith thanksgiving. Thanking God in faith will open the door and allow God to give you the details and the grace and whatever it takes for the way out. If you're complaining, murmuring, griping, complaining, being unthankful, you open the door to the destroyer. So it's, if you really are serious about believing God for those new clothes, you've got to hush griping about the ones you got. Everybody with me now? If you're really serious about believing God for that better vehicle, you've got to quit griping about the one you got. Be thankful for what you got. That doesn't mean you can't believe for better. But don't be unthankful for where you are. Be thankful for what you got. Right? Don't don't look in there and gripe about your clothes. Look in there and say, Lord, I thank you that I got something to wear. I am thankful. Thank you. Look at that. That's nice. Look at that. Somebody sewed that to me. Look at that. Thank you, Lord. That's a nice piece right there. Thank you. And I want to thank you for giving me better too. Thank you. I'm believing for even better. I'm believing to come up from where. Do you see how that flows from one to the, it it flows together. But you standing there griping and complaining. You're unhooking from the provision and opening the door to the consumer, the destroyer. Thank you, Lord, for this car. It's a good car. Especially the rougher it's in, you better speak good over it. Right? Put your words working for it. You know, if it's on its last leg, you want it to last long as you need it. Right? So use your faith on it. Put your faith on it. Say, boy, this is a good car. I know we, uh, Phyllis and I have seen this just work in so many different areas. We had a dog for how many years did Mandy survive? 19 or 20 years? Long time for a dog to live, you know. And but for all her life, Phyllis confessed over like every day, Mandy's such a good little dog. She's a good dog. I'm telling you a good dog. This is a good dog. But they went, there was a neighbor's dog. What kind of little dog was that? A little bitty, huh? What was it? Anyway, they named that dog Yappy Doodle. And oh dear me, I'd come out there sometime and that dog would be just standing there yapping its brains out and it looked like it wanted to stop. I thought they have released faith on that poor dog. (laughs) Can't shut up. They all named him Yappy Doodle. Yaps all the time when he did. You kick your lawnmower, you say, that's the sorriest lawnmower I have ever had. That's the biggest piece of junk they ever made. People don't realize it, but you and I were designed by the Creator who creates with His words and rules with His words. We're made in His image and likeness. We're supposed to rule and reign in our life through what we say. And that's why the devil has worked so hard to get cursing in your mouth. Because even though people don't know it works, the devil knows it works. And so that's why, think about everything that's supposed to be cool. Instead of saying something's good, what is it popular to say? Oh, that's bad. That's bad. Now the new one is sick. 
Have you noticed that? Man, that's a sick ride. That is so sick. Man, they did such a great job. Man, that's sick. Friends, don't, don't be stupid enough to say that. It'll be some other word in a few months. It's just some popular trend. And, and you know, people, they want to curse stuff. Curse. They want to use damn on everything. In fact, it's become cool. Something, something's, you know, in, 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 impressive. People go, damn. <laughs> Why isn't it cool to say, blessed? Yeah. Why ain't that cool? Because the devil don't want nobody with blessed in their mouth. Because yeah. blessed shuts him down and opens the door for God to move. So don't you be talking about that damn car, that damn lawnmower. <laughs> now you're laughing, but there's all kind of church going people. <laughs> Come on, tell me how about your car? What about your car? What about your, it's a blessed man. <laughs> Everything I got is blessed. It just lasts twice, three times as long as it's supposed to. And it just works so good. And the real time test to say it is when it's messing up on you. So you're not moved by what you see. I mean, it won't start, it won't work, and you're tempted to kick it and cuss. Don't do it. You look at it and go, that's a blessed lawnmower. It's a blessed car. It's a blessed car. And... It ties you in to faith for the better. Lord, I want to thank you for this car. This car's been a blessing to me. Got me point A to point B over and over again. I sure appreciate it. I'm thankful. And I'm thanking you for my new one. You see how that flows? It just flows so easy from one to the next. But when you get into the complaining mode, cussing mode, you've unhooked from the blessing. And you're opening the door. It's not my, th my, my words, 1 Corinthians 10, 10, they were destroyed of the destroyer while they were griping and complaining. It opens the door to the destroyer in your life. It's dangerous stuff. Don't do it. Can you take a little more? Uh, help me, Lord. Go with me to... Uh, Psalm 8. The, the danger and problem in all this is this mentality of entitlement. And let's believe God to open our eyes to see how ugly this thing about him and others owing us is. Because that's why people are unthankful. I was uh, talking to a brother and a friend, fellow pastor. This has been several weeks ago. I was just impressed of the Lord to call him. And he was uh, he's in the hospital facing some real challenging situations. And I talk with him a little bit, and I'm always looking in my spirit, not just hearing what people are saying, but I'm checking in here because of myself, I, I can't help, but the one inside me can. And uh, I begin to talk to him about not looking at his self and his faith. He's a brother. He's a believer. He's a teacher of the Word and faith. He knows the Word. And he's facing some really serious physical issues. He's bed fast there in, in the hospital or I'm no bed fast, but he was in the bed. And uh, I, I said to him something the Lord had given me years ago. I said, uh, called his name, I said, don't let yourself think about what you don't have or about what you can't do. I said, shut it off. Cut it off. Don't let yourself think or meditate or talk with anybody else about what you're not, 
what you don't have, what you can't do. Are you with me tonight, friends? Say it out loud. What I don't have, what I'm not, what I can't do. These are off limits for me to think about or talk about. Now, friend, there's some really good things here tonight. Don't, don't let them pass you by. This can change your life if you'll practice it. Because there were some real substantial things that he, he didn't have, he couldn't do. And if you get to comparing yourself with other people and go, well, they got it. They can do it. How do you feel? You feel like a victim. You feel like you are to be pitied. Pity thyself. And oh, that's serious. Oh, that, that's what caused Jesus to wheel around and say, get behind me. Should that be our response? Anything that tries to get us to thinking like we're the victim in this, like somebody owes us, like we're to be pitied. Friend, you better jump up on the inside. You better jump up on the inside. You better resist that with everything that's within you that can destroy you. Or any of us. As I, as I was talking to him about it, I said, Re absolutely refuse to let yourself sit there and think about it for one minute and don't let anybody come in there and talk to you about it. Change the subject. Get them off of it. Only think about and thank God for who you are in Him, what you have in Him, and what you can do. In Him. Talk about that. Think about that. Only. And there's a principle. See, in His light, we see light. Lord, help me get this out better. If you talk, if you talk about what you're not, what you don't have, what you can't do, that's darkness. And as you focus on that, the light of the body is the eye. And if the, dark, if the light so-called that's in you is darkness, the scripture said, your whole body will be full of darkness. But the light of the body is the eye. And if you're looking at light, in his light we see light. The more you talk about what you have, you get enlightened. That you have more than you knew you had. The more you talk about what you can do in him... You become enlightened and are unable to do more. There's grace in that. Yes. And can you see that's in the flow of thanksgiving? Yes. You're not talking about what you, you're not, what you don't have, what you can't do. You're talking about what you are, yes. what you do have, what you can do. He caught it. Of course, he's quick anyway. Man, he caught it just like that. He said, I got it, Brother Keith. He began to praise God. Me and him just got happy right there on the phone. He said, I got this. I said, you sure do. He said, I am this. I said, yes, you are. He's laying up in the bed hurting, facing all these possible losses and situations. Well, it wasn't a, what, a few weeks after that, I met him in a meeting. We're over there shouting God together, praising God. He's out preaching the gospel. How quickly it turned around. He's looking good. Going strong. Don't think about. Are you with me now? What do we say? Don't think about what? What you're not. What you don't have. What you can't do. Is it dangerous to think about those things? Oh, oh. That's where the devil wants you. Well, they're such and such, and I'm not. They're thin and beautiful. Well, what, what are you about to say now? <laughs> about yourself. Huh? They're rich and famous. What, what are you saying? You're saying I don't have anything to be thankful for because I'm not what they are. They've got this. They've got a new car. They've got a big house. And I don't have it. Well, what are you saying? It's not fair. Why ain't it fair? Well, I should have it too. 
Why? Who are you? Well, I'm me. So? Why should you have it? Who are you? Can you see the problem here? And yet, you know, it gets a little quiet because people feel like, well, you know, I don't feel like that I'm, you know, any better than anybody else, but I don't feel like I'm any worse. I mean, I observe what they do. Do you know that is not a scripture? And did you know that is contrary to scripture? Well, I don't believe I'm any better than anybody, but I don't believe I'm any worse. People think that's a scripture. It's against the scripture. Go to Philippians. Well, we're having fun now, aren't we? You said you wanted some more. You, you, you asked for it, didn't you? Not that you felt like you deserved it. <laughs> Philippians chapter 2. Verse 3, this is Scripture. Man, you have to watch, don't you, about what people say and just picking up on stuff and saying it yourself. Philippians 2, 3. Let nothing be done through strife or vain glory, but in lowliness of mind, let each esteem what? Amen. Others what? Amen. Well, they're not no worse than me, but ain't nobody no better than me either. Where'd you get that? The scripture told you and me to esteem others what? Better. Well, that's going over big, ain't it? You, could, you feel that excitement? <laughs> How can you, we talked about this last week, in being glad for your brother, yeah. right? Being thankful for your brother. But how is it that you're being thankful for your brother if you're upset because you don't have what your brother's got? You can't be in faith because you're not in love. It grieves you to see them enjoy it. It pains you. I wish I was talking about unbelievers. But we're talking about church-going people. So-and-so got their spouse. You know, your girlfriend, I'm talking about a lady. Your girlfriend got their wonderful, amazing Philippians 3.20 man. And he's everything you'd ever want. And you're still eating cold macaroni by yourself at home. <laughs> and it pains you to see them together because it reminds you of what you don't have. What is, what's, what is you believing without saying it? I should have it too. It's not fair. It's not right. I should have it. Why? Why should you have it? Why does God owe it to you? Why does anybody owe you anything? Why? Because you're who? You're what? The truth is, you don't deserve it. I don't care who you are. God doesn't owe it to you. And none of us owe you a smile or a handshake. Because of what you've done. Now, because of what God has done for all of us and what he's told us, we owe you love. But that's not because of anything you are or you've done. Thank you. 
This, this belief, this feeling of entitlement is a wretched curse on the whole planet. It is robbing people. It is hindering blessings. It is destroying relationships all over the place because even if people don't say it, they feel that way. You owe me. I was there. I did all this for you. It's the least you can do. Well, then you never gave them anything. If they owe you something, you didn't give them anything. I gave him the best years of my life. <laughs> I wiped their little nose and changed their diaper. <laughs> I gave him 25 years working every day. What are you saying? You're saying it was a loan and I want to be paid back. And if that's true, you're in terrible shape because that means that was not seed. You didn't sow it. You didn't give it. It wasn't love. You wanted something out of it. You want your payback. That's not the way God works. The way God works is you sow a seed and there are no strings. Pew. We're not asking for anything in return, not even a thank you, nothing, nothing to seed. If it really is a free seed, now you've got a right to believe for a harvest. And you don't have to look to them. You don't know where it's going to come through. Can y'all take this? I feel like I lost some folks a while ago. What are you entitled to? What do we owe you? What does your family owe you? Nothing. What do your friends owe you? <laughs> what do they owe you? Nothing. What are you entitled to? Nothing. What do you deserve? <laughs> <laughs> now this was the statement the Lord said to me is years ago, and I'm just now getting some more light on it. He said, you can't be gracious to someone who feels they deserve it. I got a glimpse of what he meant by it back there 15, 20 years ago, but, oh, man, it's beginning to open up to me now. I'm beginning to see I didn't, I didn't see a fraction of what he was saying. All of his words are that way. It's just another, another way of saying what's already in the book, something that will catch our attention. How many understand half the New Testament, particularly the, the epistles, are more than that, is about grace yes. versus works, yes. isn't it? Yes. By grace you are saved. Yes. It's through faith, but it's by grace, not of works, lest any man should boast. Not of works, it's the gift of God. You didn't deserve it. You don't earn it. You don't merit it. You're not entitled to any of it. And yet, you can have it. <laughs> if you can receive grace. And you do that with faith. Well, everything we desire in life comes exactly the same way. It comes by grace. It's not a, Healing is not owed to you. God doesn't owe you healing because you go to church regular. God doesn't owe you healing because you're a hard worker. You're a volunteer. You work with the children. You, you, you tithe and you give. He doesn't owe you healing because of that. He doesn't owe you healing at all. Jesus bought your healing, though. Oh, hallelujah. He took your infirmities in mind. He bore our sicknesses. He carried our pains. And he said, here, I'll give it to you free. <laughs> Didn't he? But he doesn't owe it to you and me at all. No, he doesn't owe us prosperity. He doesn't owe us anything. And yet he wants us to have it all. But you got to get rid of that I deserve it stuff. It'll all. 
there are so many people living in so much pain. And it's because of this. They're miserable. They're hurting. Because they don't have a bigger house. They don't have a new car. They don't have this. They don't have that. And so they're unhappy. They look around at what other people have. And yet I've been to countries where people are sleeping on the ground. Huh? Eating a piece of junk. You wonder where it came from. Rags. And got a smile that looks like a neon sign. They're happy. They're enjoying life. They're thrilled to be there. And they don't have anything of the trappings of material things that we're talking about. So it must not be necessary to be thankful. I said it must not be necessary to be thankful. Go to Hebrews, please, the 13th chapter. Oh, I could use another hour. <laughs> Hebrews. Is pity thyself dangerous stuff? Is it dangerous? Can you afford any of it? Do we need mind renewal? Oh, friend, do, do not look around and go, yeah, you know, boy, there's some, there's some real self piteous type people. Right? Every one of us have yielded to this stuff in different degree. Every, every person in this room has yielded to this different times and different ways. It's not a question of if you have, it's just a question of how much. But every time you or I have, it's cost us. And if you're ever going to grow up, if you're ever going to grow up spiritually and grow up in God, you have to grow up in love. God is love. If you're going to grow up to become like Him, you have to grow up to become like love. And love suffers long and is kind. Love is not envious, is it? It's not. It doesn't judge. It doesn't keep track and keep account of, of suffered wrongs. Love knows how to enjoy life. It's not selfish. It's not self-centered. I heard somebody the other day. This has been actually a few months ago. And they were talking about a certain situation. They asked about uh, what that person would do in such and such situation. And they said, well, they call their name. We'll just say it's John. It's not. But we'll say, uh, they live in John's world, they said. That was their name. I knew what they were talking about. Whatever your name is, you've lived in that world before. Now, if it means you're talking about Keith's world, I'll use Dave. He can handle it. What's it like in Dave's world? <laughs> if Dave lives in Dave's world, what's it like there in Dave's world? Well, in Dave's world, everything is about Dave. <laughs> everything in the universe is about how it affects Dave. In Dave's world, Everybody should be nice to Dave. <laughs> In Dave's world, everybody should be thinking about Dave and how Dave feels and what Dave needs and what Dave wants because it's Dave's world. <laughs> Can you see there's a lot of people living in whatever it is, their name? Well, I mean, it's just, it's gotten terrible. You get out and try to get around somewhere, people will run over you. I'm talking about in the store. They will just run flat over you like you're not even there. And you, and, and, and look, in the road or whatever, why? Because they're in their own world where everything revolves around them and what they're thinking and what they're doing and they're oblivious to you. A lot of times they really don't see you and they don't care because you're not in their world. <laughs> 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 
Living in your own world means living in the world of self-interest, self-centered, self-deserving, self-entitlement. So you expect everybody to accommodate you. And you're shocked and appalled when they don't. And angered and hurt when they don't. Now, every time you get hurt or upset about something somebody didn't do for you, you need to stop yourself immediately and go, now, hold on, hold on. Who do I think I am? Why do I think they were supposed to do that for me? Why did I think they were supposed to notice me? Who do I think I am? What do I think I am? I've seen preachers get the big head. They come into meetings and always got to have special parking and always got to have special seats. Always, why? Who are you? <laughs> I've had people tell me, don't you know who I am? And I want to say, do you know who you're not? <laughs> Obviously, you don't know who you really are. Because apart from him, you're nothing. And that's not my opinion. That's 1 Corinthians 8. And in John, apart from him, you can do nothing. Right? Apart from him, you are nothing. You have nothing. And you can do. You got it. People say, yeah, but I, I'm the righteousness of God in Christ. In who? In who? In Christ. That's not in you. That's not because of what you did or who you are. That's because of him, what he did. Well, I can do all things. Don't stop there. Don't stop there. Put up Philippians 4.13 for us on the screen. Well, I can do all things. No, you can't. You can mess up. I can do all things, what, what? Don't leave off those two words. Through Christ who strengthens you. Only through him. Hmm. <laughs> you want some more? Good, good. Go to, where are you? Hold on to that. Hold on to Hebrews 13. Go back to 1 Corinthians 4. I think you'll get more out of it if you, you get this first. 1 Corinthians 4. Okay, Dave, come back now. <laughs> this is not Dave's world. We're not, we're not going to live in Dave's world. Or Keith's world or... Uh, your world, come on. Say it out loud, I'm not going to, I'm not going to live, in my own world. live in my own world. Lord, open my eyes. Lord, open my eyes. Help me to see outside myself. Help me to, outside myself. Help, me to Help me to be aware of you and aware of others and, aware of others. and, lay, myself and lay myself aside. Friend, this is the life that is the happiest. This, this is the way to the joyous life, I'm telling you. In the scripture where the Lord was talking about, this is my commandment. This is the commandment I give you, that you love one another as I have loved you. Did you know that's where he said also, this is, I'm telling you this, so that your joy will be full. The selfish life, the self-centered, living, Keith, living in Keith's world life is the miserable life. It's possible to have all kind of stuff and you're still miserable because of something you don't have. It's amazing. There are people that are multi-millionaires and multi-billionaires, and they're suicidal. You know why? Because they got the first nine uh, Ferraris that came out in 69, but they don't have number 10. And the guy that's got it won't sell it to them. And they're unhappy in their 20-room mansion. 
with their $5,000 pajamas on. They're crying and miserable because they can't get serial number 10. And yet you got somebody in a hut down in Africa, South America, smiling, praising God, eating a piece of the chicken that you wouldn't eat in rags. Why? Because their name is written in the Lamb's book of life. And they know that greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world. And instead of thinking about what they don't got, they are thinking about what they do. And you can be happy. I mean, all, all, none of us are here, but just for a few days anyway. I know when I was teaching at Ramah, I overheard at the uh, lunch area where they would eat some first-year students talking about some things happened over here. At, one of them supposed to be testifying, but he's really just bragging about all the stuff he had. And, of course, a lot of people were just struggling, just barely make you know, getting by day to day. And he went on and on, on and on, on and on about all this stuff he had. Finally, one guy, you could tell he was perturbed. One guy was listening to him. He said, well, he said, so what? Your pile of ashes will be bigger than mine. <laughs> you know, it's true. It's all going to melt with fervent heat. I don't care what it is. Nobody's taking any of it with them, Right? Your pile of ashes will be bigger than mine. You know, we believe in prosperity. We believe God will give you the desires of your heart. But it really don't mean that much. Oh, that was weak. That was weak. I said it really doesn't mean that much. And if you think you have to have it to be happy, you're in trouble. Because there will always be something else you don't have. It's a trick of the devil. You still got Hebrews? Let's read it then. We'll read that first. Now you were going you were going to hold Hebrews, right? I, I know you I know you turned to First Corinthians four, but you you still got Hebrews, right? Well, let's read Hebrews then. Hey, don't tell me how to do this. Come on, read Hebrews. <laughs> Somebody should have. You need a little relief once in a while. <laughs> I still got some people looking at me dazed like, I don't deserve it? No, no, you don't. I'm sorry, but you don't. Sorry, no. I can't lie to you. I got to tell you the truth. <laughs> There's some people that's really working on it because they just had a revelation that they're living in Dave's world, you know, they're, they're, their own world. They're, they thought, wow, it's not okay to live in my own world. No, it's not. Hebrews 13 Verse 5, let your conversation, that means your way of life, your manner of life, your way of life be what? Without covetousness. And be what? Be what? Say it again. Be what? Content. With what? Such things as you have. Is that where you are right now? Now, some have thought that was contradictory to the prosperity message, but it's not. It's not. It's fine to have a vision list. It's fine to sow your seed and claim, believe for houses, cars, stuff. It's fine. But if you can't be content without it, that's not okay. If you're unhappy because you don't have it, and you're discontent. See that this is the key word, isn't it? Be what? Content. content. How could you be content? I'm talking like these folk we we're talking about a few minutes ago. There's a lot of people sleeping on the ground, right? Eating junk, wearing rags. And some of them are a lot happier than people living in mansions. How can that be? How can you be content? Because Jesus is the source. Salvation is the source of real joy and peace and contentment. And if you learn how to not focus on what you don't have, 
Not let yourself think about Any one of them could, could get to thinking about what they don't have. Let their self get down. But if you only think and talk about what I got, what I do have, what I am in Him, what I can do in Him, and you just refuse to think about anything else, you won't let anybody get you off on that. You just won't. They start talking about, well, poor thing, bless your heart, you don't have this. You got to jump up like Jesus and say, get behind me, get behind me. Amen. It'll shock them, but it'll be you acting like Jesus. Because what are they saying? What are they saying? Pity thyself, poor thing, poor thing, driving out a wore out car. They treated you so mean, poor thing. Friend, these are words to perish by. Did you hear me? They are words to perish by. Because if you get to thinking about that and talking about that, then you get to feeling like something's owed you and you deserve better and it ain't fair and you'll get that attitude with God and you have cut yourself off from the grace of God. He cannot, he cannot be gracious to you because you think he owes it to you. You've made it impossible for God to be gracious to you, and that's a bad place to be, isn't it? Be what? Be content. When? Right now. With what? What you got right now? I don't mean I can't believe for something better, but I am not putting my contentment off until then. I'm my, my happiness is not postponed until I get to take delivery of it. I'm content right now without it. Yes. Yes. Glory to God. If that was really true, what would be coming out of your mouth all the time? Oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for what I got right now. Thank you for where I am right now. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And once in a while you can throw that and thank you for the new one. But, but don't focus on that. Go to Philippians well, while you're close by there. Philippians 4. <sighs> Philippians 4. I know this is a little different, but you know, I've never taught this before, just like this. So I'm believing God, right? And you're helping me, right? I know the truth is here. I know pieces of it, but I'm believing it to come out in a connected way. I'm believing for the light, the example, so we, we see it, so we get it. And so it may, sometimes it takes a little extra time or we have to believe God or come around about it from a different way. But the main thing is that we get it. Amen. Philippians 4 we just quoted verse 13. I, what, what can I do? Don't talk about what you can't do. Don't talk about what you can't do. Talk about what you can do. And when he said, I can do all things, we need to put it in the context. What, what context did he say that in? Look at verse 11. Well, verse 10. He said, I rejoiced in the Lord greatly. You know, he's sitting in jail. Talking about rejoicing. He kept telling them, rejoice. Rejoice in the Lord all the time. And again, I'm telling you, rejoice. He's sitting in a cold, stinky jail cell. Can you be content in jail? Yes. If Jesus is with you, yes. huh? Yes. Why can't you be? Yes. Don't mean you, don't, you, know, you can believe to get out. But if you think you cannot be happy, until you're out. You can't have any peace till you get out. You can't have any joy till you get out. You're just robbing yourself. Right? Because Paul did. That's when he said this. He said, Your care of me has flourished again. He said, you, you, If you read the rest of it, they sent to him. They sent stuff to him. He said, verse 11, Not that I speak in respect of want, for I have learned. 
He learned something. It's what you and I are learning right now. Right? We're learning the same thing right now. What did you learn, Brother Paul? I learned in whatsoever state I am to be content. I learned it. So he wasn't born knowing it. He didn't just know it all because he was born again filled with the Spirit. But he learned it. We're learning it. Keep reading. He said, I, I learned and I know both how to be abased. That's low. And I know how to abound. <laughs> Everywhere. And in all things, I am instructed. We're getting instructed. Both to be full and to be hungry. To abound, to suffer need. I can do all things. Through Christ who strengthens, what is he saying? I can have the victory in this stinky jail cell with garbage on my plate and rags on my back. Doesn't mean he's not believing to get out. But he's not waiting till he gets out to have joy and peace. Oh, come on. And contentment. He said, I've learned how to do. What did he learn how to do? He learned how to walk by faith. Not be moved by what he saw or what he felt or what he didn't see, what he didn't feel. He learned how to thank God when everybody else is complaining. He learned how to bless when everybody else is cussing. He learned how to shout when everybody else is crying. And in that case, you don't waste your life. The devil's, he's crafty. And if you let him do it, he will have you waiting on something your whole life. Well, you got that, yeah, but you don't have this yet. And that's really what's going to make it click. And that's going to fulfill you and help you to come on in to. And so you're still waiting on something. You're still waiting on something. You're not content, so you're not happy. You don't have peace because you're waiting. One of these days I'm going to get it and then we'll all be happy and it's a lie. I said it's a lie. There is no thing. There is no person. There is no circumstance on the earth or thing that men can do with you or for you that can give you contentment and peace and joy on the inside. There's no alcohol, there's no drug, there's no sex, there's no possession. All of it is just a temporary thing. Like Jesus said to the woman at the well, he said, you drink this water, you're going to be thirsty again. <laughs> Didn't he? He said, but I got some water. <laughs> oh, I got, I got some water that I give you and you will never be thirsty again. It's a well of living water that springs up within you. It's self-sustaining. And when you've got that, you don't have to wait on anything. <laughs> you can have it anywhere. You can have it right now. Right now. You can be content. You can have peace. You can have joy. Now. 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 Before you make it big. Because <laughs> making it big ain't going to do it. I'm telling you, it ain't going to do it. You can't even enjoy a new car unless you were already right with God before you got it. Unless you already had, you can't even enjoy a new house like you should. You can't. Unless you didn't need it. To fulfill you. You already had your joy before you moved in. You can't even enjoy a proper husband or wife, spouse, if you were needy and desperate going into it. You got to be content and fulfilled in Jesus. You are complete in Him. Now. Beloved, now are you the sons of God. Now. 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 now, now, all this other stuff's just gravy. <laughs> Lanyap, extra. 
Hey, you got Jesus. You got, you got salvation. You, you got the Holy Spirit. That's it. Everything else is trimming. <laughs> if God spared not his son, but delivered him up for us all, how shall he not with him freely give us all things? Can you see Jesus is the main thing that you've been given? All this other stuff is just something he gave you with him. But you got him, you, you've got everything. Glory to God. Glory to God. I know you're holding 1 Corinthians, but go to Psalm 8. And I'll, I'm thinking about closing. Psalm 8. It just makes you so free when you quit expecting everybody to do all these things for you and live in your world. It loosens you up. It sets you free. I saw this years ago. I'm, I'm growing in it, but I saw it, and I thought, Keith, stop presuming that anybody is going to do anything for you. Quit it. Quit it. And in that regard, don't let yourself expect or presume for anybody to do anything for you. It's wrong. But what you can do is be thankful for everything that anybody does for you. Now think about how this works. If I never let myself get to thinking about what you ought to do for me, then I'm never disappointed when you don't do it. I lose no days being depressed. I don't get mad at you because I didn't expect you to do it anyway. But then when somebody does do something, oh, glory to God. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. So I'm never getting upset, and I'm always being thankful. Sound like a good life to you? <laughs> but you got, so you've got to grab this when it first comes up. Where's so-and-so? Why aren't they here? Did they put an offering in? Why weren't they apart? That's why I don't look at the books. I don't want to know. I mean, I know the big numbers, but I don't, I don't know your number. Don't need to know, don't want to know. Is so-and-so here? I can't let myself think about they should be here. I care about for their sakes, but they don't owe me support. I had, a, I had a fellow minister one time, he was all upset. He said, why won't, why won't these churches help me? I said, why should they? <laughs> he looked at me like I'd slapped him. He, he looked at me like, whoa, whoa. Well, I said, well, what? There's good ministries all over the place. Why should they support you instead of them? Well, it's a good work. Well, great. God told me to do it. Well, if he did, he'll support it. Well, they should help me, said who? There's a lot of people all over the planet. God can use all kinds of people. You let your eyes get on them, and you get to think about what they should be doing for me, you are wrong every time. I don't care if they're kin folks, close friends, I don't care who they are. It's wrong. And you have now made it impossible for them to be gracious to you. Because you think they owe you. You think you deserve it. And why do you, tell me again, why do you deserve it? <laughs> why? Why should we do it for you? You know, if you live in Dave's world, <laughs> then when you walk in the room, the music is supposed to play. Da, 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 da. <laughs> Dave is, has arrived. And everybody's supposed to go, oh, Dave, oh, Dave, oh, Dave, oh, Dave, sit here. Dave, eat my popsicle. Dave. <laughs> here's money Dave 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 but you don't live in Dave's world this is not Dave's world it's not Keith's world it's God's world 
Right? <laughs> Psalm 8. Psalm 8. Singers, players, y'all come on. O oh Lord, our Lord, how excellent is your name in all the earth who've set your glory above the heavens. Out of the mouth of babes and sucklings, you've ordained strength. You know, the New Testament brings out the word praise because of your enemies that you might steal the enemy and the avenger. This is one of the great things about what we're talking about. You don't, if you can't quote one verse, you can say, thank you, Jesus. You can be a baby, baby, baby that got saved five minutes ago. And you can do this with no problem, can't you? Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. When I consider the heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon, the stars which you have ordained, what is man that you're mindful of him and the son of man that you visit him. Now you'll find that phrase some other additional four or five times in the Bible. It's quoted in the New Testament. What is man that you're mindful of him? The Spirit says it through prophets and apparently the angels said it. We need a revelation of how big God is and how big this whole thing is. See, when Dave lives in Dave's world, he tunes out that there are billions of other people on the planet that God loves just as much as he loves him or me. Right? Billions. Somebody say billions. billions. If we put you in the middle of billions of people and we zoom out far enough where we can see them all at one time, we don't have a clue what color your hair is or what you got on. You are a micro speck. Now, if we zoom on out to see the whole planet, well, we can't see you at all. We can't even see what state you're standing in. And if we zoom on out so we can see all the planets in the solar system, well, the earth looks real small, like a marble. And if we zoom on out <laughs> where we can see the whole universe that God has created, well, we can't even see our planet anymore. Even with a telescope, we can't see it. And you back on up to where God is sitting on the throne, beholding the end from the beginning, seeing where light began as he spoke and seeing where it will continue to the end. And all the billions of human beings that have come before you and are on the earth now with you and that shall come after you. Why would you think that all heaven is supposed to stop and listen to you when you decide to say something. Why would you think that you deserve all of this? This is why people that get to thinking about it, they come to the conclusion that our whole planet is absolutely insignificant. And that our little life of a few breaths and a few days is totally inconsequential and insignificant. But our God is so great. I said he is so great. And we are his apple of his eye, his his creation, he has chosen us to be his family. And he knows every hair on our head. 
We should never think that heaven is supposed to stop because we stand up and have a thought. <laughs> we should be aware of how big he is and how big this is and how many other billions of people he loves just like he loves us. And what we ought to be is so thankful when he does hear us and he does acknowledge us and he does talk to us and listen to us. We shouldn't act like we deserve it, like he owes it to us. We should be amen. thankful. Can you say amen? amen. Thankful. I mean, the angels themselves, they want to know, what, what is man? They look down and see these little puny bodies and punier minds. <laughs> and they see the arrogance and they see the selfishness and the junk. And God has made such a huge deal over his man. And they want to go, God, what is the deal with this man? You, you've done all this. You, Come on, read, read the rest of it with me. You made him a little lower than the angels. You crowned him with glory and honor. You made him to have dominion over all the work of your hands. And you put all things under his feet. We shouldn't feel entitled. We should feel thankful. Yes. Shouldn't we? Young Christians sometimes will get to clamoring, God, I want you to show yourself to me. Uh, give me a vision. Uh, I want to hear your voice. Or, this is presumption. He's called the whole planet to walk by faith. These are special manifestations for his plan. Why would you think God owes you a special visitation, a special vision, a special word? Are y'all listening to me? Yes. This is presumption. It's ignorance, it's foolishness, it's pride. We should be so thankful that out of all the billions on the planet, we can come boldly before the throne of grace and He will hear us and He does know us and He does care. But we should come so humbly, shouldn't we? And so thankfully. And say, Lord, I know you got billions of other people to deal with. Too. And I'm so thankful that you listened to me today. Thank you, Lord, for helping me to grow up. You don't owe me anything. You've already done everything for me. What can I do for you? Here I am, Lord. Use me. What can I do? How can I help you? I exist because of you. I breathe because of you. I can have a thought because of you. I belong to you. Use me. Get some good out of me. Do what suits you and pleases you with me. And then when he does, what should you say? What should you say? Wait. Oh, oh, thank you. Thank you. Stand on your feet and begin to do it. Oh, thank you. Say it out loud. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Master. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Come on, lift up your voice. Lift up your voice and praise Him. Lift up your hearts. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Oh, thank you. Come on, everybody, lift up your hands. Don't wait till another time. Thank him right now. Oh, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. Come on, thank him some more. Thank you that you know my name. Thank you that it's written in the Lamb's Book of Life. Thank you. Thank you that you care for me. Thank you that you keep me in your hand. Thank you that you make me to stand. God, 
I'm your man Singing thanks Oh, everybody Everybody say, everybody say, thanks, thanks. I give you thanks. I give you thanks. Oh, you Everything you've done for me. I am so blessed. So blessed. So Just close your eyes Focus on the one Who sits on the throne Of glory With the winged creatures round about And the saints that give a shout Holy, holy, holy And he knows your name. Somebody say thank you. Somebody say thank you. He holds us in his hand. Through everything he makes us to stand. Thank you, Lord. Everybody say, everybody say thanks. Oh, thanks. Hallelujah, Lord, you've done so much for us. We haven't earned, we haven't deserved the least of your mercies, but you did it anyway. In spite of our failures, in spite of our disobedience, oh, you've dealt graciously with me. Everybody say thanks. Thanks. I give you thanks. I give you thanks. I'm thankful. I'm thankful tonight. I am so blessed. I am so blessed. Oh Lord. I give you thanks. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. If you mean it, say it out loud. I purpose not to let myself think on what I'm not, what I don't have, what I can't do. That's wrong. I will give praise to God for who he's made me to be. All the blessings he's given me and what I can do through Christ Jesus who strengthens me. Hallelujah. Oh, thanks. Oh, thanks. Come on, focus on him just a little bit longer. Give him the glory. Give him the praise. Give him the thanks. I give you. Everybody say thanks, thanks, thanks. I give you thanks.
the many things you've done. I am so blessed. I'm so blessed. My soul has found rest. Oh Lord, I give you thanks. Oh hallelujah. Oh hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Glory to God. Phyllis, do you have anything at all? Come on up here. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. But there might be a tongue, an interpretation, or, or anything the Lord had put on your heart. Mm, come on, worship God. Don't look at us. Focus on the Lord. Focus on Jesus, on the Master. You know, before we, we did that, this did keep coming up in my heart. You may not be valuable in yourself at all. And the devil may have been telling you that, that you are worthless. And you're not worth anything. And you don't have any point or reason to live because you are worthless. Well, there is somebody that paid a major price for you. And he paid the most valuable price that there is. And he made you the most valuable thing that there is because of the price that he paid for you. So don't sit around and think about that you're not worth anything. You are very, very valuable. You're worth the most valuable thing that God had to give, His Son. Yes. Yes. Yes, that's right. that's don't think about what you can't do like what He was saying. You don't have to do it in yourself. You have the greater one inside of you that can do it. And He paid the price to help you to do that. He gave you the greater one to help you to get over whatever the situation is that's going on inside of you right now so recognize that you are valuable and you are precious for just a minute bow your heads I just have it real strong on my heart I know of a couple of situations so I know that this is already happening but I just feel like real strong in my heart that there are some more maybe you've heard tonight and you said you know, I'm not valuable, and I just feel like all this stuff with this money's going on, and with my marriage is going on, and with my job, I've gotten laid off, or I've gotten fired, or I've, I've, I just don't have any reason anymore to continue going on. If that's you in here tonight, and you'll be bold enough just to lift your hand up, or even to come down here, we want to pray with you and believe with you. If you're in here now, and you're just ready to throw in the towel and quit, Come on down here and let us pray for you. Or just lift your hand up and we'll pray for you where you are. I think there's some people in here that's probably too embarrassed to do it because I know who some of them are. But if it's you, be bold enough just for 30 seconds with eyes closed. Now, nobody, I don't even care if the ushers are looking around right now. Just close your eyes. And if it's you and you've just been ready to quit, no eyes looking around. Lift your hand up for 30 whole seconds and let God see your hand. Yeah, okay, you can put it down as soon as, if you don't want to come up front, you can put it down. But the other ones that want to come up front, come on down. There's several people up here already. You can come down if you want. There's others that should raise their hand. Just ready to quit. Quit believing for your marriage. Quit believing for your kids. Quit believing for anything. If you're strong enough, come down here and let us join our faith with yours. We may not touch you at all, but we're just going to join our faith with yours and we're going to pray over you. There may be some young people in here, and you may not have told mom or dad, or you may not have told anybody, but it's time. I know what time it is, but if one of these people get turned around,
it was your spouse or your child, you'd be ready to pray. So pray with us now. Maybe the person next to you is not strong enough. I think there's some more people in here that should be down here with us. Father, in Jesus' name, I just ask you now, if there's anybody out there and they hadn't been strong enough and they don't want anybody to know, I just ask you to strengthen them now so that we can pray with them and join our faith with theirs to come on down here now. Satan, you take your hands off of them. If you just feel so weak, a little strength here tonight. You just say, I feel, I feel so weak. I just, I need help. That's what this is about. Raise your hand or get up and come right down. You felt like giving up. There's strength here tonight in him. All right, well, everybody in here, if you're strong, there's some people still coming, but if you're strong and you've had this kind of thing attack you before that you wanted to quit, stretch your hand out to these people. Let's join our faith. One can put a thousand to flight, two can put ten thousand to flight. So let's join our faith with their faith. Right now, in the name of Jesus, we come against every lying, oppressing spirit. We command you to stop, shut up, and stop and come off of them, come off of their minds, come away from their souls, release them, loose them. And get out of here. Get out of their lives. Go. Be gone. In the name of Jesus. Depression. Come off. Oppression and heaviness. Come off. Thoughts of failure and death and suicide. Come off. Come off. Leave them. Go away from them. In Jesus name. Oh hallelujah. 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 And we say, everybody in the congregation, reach your hands out this way. Say, be strong. Be strong. Be made strong. Oh, thank you. Now receive. Believe you receive. Believe you receive strength. Oh, congregation, just keep saying it again. Be strong. Reach your hands. Say, be strong. Be strong in the Lord. Be strong in His might. Be strong. Oh, be strong. Be made strong. Be made strong. Oh, and you can receive in the congregation the same way if you're not standing here. Believe you receive strength. On the internet, that's right. On the internet, same spirit working there. Working right here. Oh, thank you, Lord. If we believe the Lord's heard us, if we believe the word's effective, we believe we receive, what's it time to say? What's it time to say? Thank you, Lord. So begin to lift up your hands. Begin to say, thank you, Lord, for setting me free. Thank you, Lord, for setting me free. Thank you, Lord, for making me strong. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, say thanks. 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 I give you thanks. Everybody say. I am so blessed. My soul has found rest. Oh, Lord, I give you thanks. Sing it again, everybody say. Thanks. Thanks. I give you thanks. I give you thanks. Oh, you. So blessed. My soul has found rest. Oh Lord, I give you thanks. Praise God. All right, friends, just turn, go your way. Believe you received. 
Believe you receive. The word's been spoken over you. Oh, thank you, thank you, thank you, Lord. Thank you, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Should anybody feel sorry for you? That was too weak. That was way, way too. Should anybody feel sorry for you? No, no, no. If they could find something you didn't have, for every one of them, you could show them a hundred things you do have. Right in God, in Jesus. And he can add to you the thing you don't have. While you're thanking God for the other. Thanks for believing with me tonight. Thanks for staying with me, even if we go a little bit long. You know, it shouldn't be that big of a deal to us. But go your way rejoicing. Go your way thanking God. Now, if we're putting this stuff into practice, there'll be times through the day, tomorrow, next week, you'll pop up and go, get behind me. Get behind. No. I'm not going to think about that. And there'll be every day that you're going. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for that nice sunshine. Thank you for the green grass. Thank you for the pretty song the birds singing. Thank you for the shoes on my feet. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for the air that I breathe. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Let's sing it as we go. Let's proclaim it as we leave. Let's sing it now. Oh, thank you.